So welcome to my talk about CSS3 and GUIT in perfect harmony. Um, if it works. So my name is Julien Dramé. I'm a software engineer at Arby's. I'm a GUIT contributor and GUIT maintainer. Um, what is this about? During this presentation, I will talk about a new feature available in uh, GUIT 2.7. So this is a new syntax for writing your CSS with CSS resource, and this syntax is based on closure style sheet, or GSS. Alors, the first question, maybe, is why? Why not simply use pure CSS in GUIT application, and why proposing an alternative syntax to the existing one? Our first we need something more powerful and advanced than CSS because with CSS, an important principle is missing. This is the dry principle, is don't repeat yourself. And so if you have a big application <coughs> and you have a lot of CSS to write, your CSS, your CSS files will become quickly a mess and it will be difficult to write and maintain those files. And then the reason why we need an alternative syntax, it's until GUID 2.7, CSS, CSS resource was lacking in terms of CSS3 support. That was one of the most voted issue for GUID. Um, this is because the existing parser that we use, that was used by GUID to parse the CSS, was a, pars a parser written in the 90s, so it doesn't know nothing about uh, CSS3. So we decide to um, use um, a new technology to, to uh, parse our CSS in GRID, and so we, we choose Closure Style Sheet or GSS. But what is Closure Style Sheet? Uh, first, it's an extension to CSS. So that means that you will create GSS file and use the GSS syntax, and then the compiler will compile your code in plain CSS. GSS has a native support for variable, conditionals, mixing, so you will be able to respect the dry principle. You don't have to repeat a lot of uh, code. <clears throat> the um, GSS compiler also will minify your CSS and it will do it very aggressively. I will show you later in, in this presentation that you will be able to use the GSS compiler without any change in your code. And just by doing that, the size of your application will decrease just because of a better minification of your CSS. Also, um, the GSS compiler will validate your CSS. And it will fail if it detects error or if your CSS is invalid. Uh, it supports also right to left flipping and it will rename the, your style class. And yeah, the big feature is it comes with a full CSS3 support. And finally, another reason on why we choose GSS is that it's an open source project, that, and that is a project that was created by Google and is maintained by Google. So if we need to change or fix something, it's much easier. It gives us more flexibility. Um, just an example of what GSS looks like. Uh, we will see all the features uh, separately later in this talk. But we define uh, a constant, we define a mixing, we use the constant and the mixing in your CSS code. Um, this is after the compilation, you refine pure CSS. Uh, before to present you all the different feature, features present in GSS, let me show you how to use it in your grid application. Oh, logically, first thing to do is to create a GSS file. This is a 
the, the GS, my GSS, <coughs> a GSS file, my first CSS, GSS or GSS. You have to create your CSS resource interface as usual. So you have to create an interface that will extend CSS resource. And then we have to uh, create a client bundle that will give you an instance of your, of your interface. Uh, everything that you use with uh, CSS resource right now uh, works with GSS. So for example here, if the name of the method doesn't match the name of your file, you can use the at source annotation. And then you have to enable uh, GSS. The support of GSS has been added in grid 2.7, but it's not enabled by default. So you, you have to explicitly tell to the compiler to use GSS to compile your, your, your CSS. And for doing that, you have to, to set the configuration property name CSS resource dot enable GSS to true. Uh, for for UI Binder, you have also explicitly to set an attribute named GSS in your inline style. So, so this is an inline style that you can use in your UI Binder uh, template. You have to add the attribute GSS equal to true. This is because we will see later that when you un when you enable GSS, you can continue to use the old syntax. So you can have a mix of the old syntax and the new one. Um, when the compiler will see uh, a .gss file, it will say, okay, GSS, I will compile it and create the, the, the CSS. But when the compiler will see a CSS file, file, it will try to convert in memory to GSS first and then compile it. But the problem with UI Binder is that you don't have any external files. So the compiler is not able to make a choice if it's GSS or CSS. So you have to explicitly tell to the compiler, okay, it's a GSS code. Um, GSS will be turned by default in grid uh, 2.8, 2, 2 so um, the step three and the step four will not be needed anymore with grid 2.8. So, Let's now uh, review the, the, the syntax and the feature of GSS that you can use in order to, to, to write your, your, your CSS. The first feature is uh, yeah, the ability to, to define a constant. So nothing new is very similar to uh, the existing syntax. The only difference that you have to use to define the name of the constant using uppercase. If you don't do that, the, compi the, the compilation will fail. Uh, the runtime evaluation, you know, sometime you will, you will be interested by injecting some value in your CSS that are no only at runtime. I mean, before to inject the, the CSS. For example, if you want to build a custom theme, theme for your user, you will only know the color to use in your CSS when the user will use the application. And it's what we need, runtime evaluation. And to do that, you can use the eval function. The eval function is the uh, function that we had in JSS, and to take, the, um, to take a string uh, as parameter, um, the string should be any valid Java expression that returns a string. So in this case, we use static uh, constant, but you can also call static function and so on. Um, as, as we've just seen in the previous slides, so there are some built-in functions in GSS that are not present in the standard CSS that you can use in your GSS file. So this is an example. This is the add function that is present in, uh, in GSS. So the compiler will add the, the value of the tree uh, constant and replace the call to the function with the result of the, of the computation. And so there are different uh, arithmetic functions that you can use to add, to subtract, to multiply, to divide, to, to use min, max, etc. You have also a built-in color manipulation function. 
So for example, if you want to adjust the brightness of a color, or if you want to create a constricting, uh, contrasting color, color and so on, you have the list there. <clears throat> uh, normally in GSS, you are able to create your own function. In fact, the implementation of the function is done in Java, so you just have to define uh, a class that implement a certain interface, and so you have a method where you, re you will receive the parameter pass in the function, then you make the needed computation, and you return the resulting CSS. The problem is that uh, you cannot do that in grid for the time being because there is no mean to add your function to the compiler. So you cannot say to the compiler, hey, this is my new function, I want to use it, and this is the implementation to use. For the time being, it's not possible. But uh, I should have time to add, add this feature for, for grid uh, 2.8, so stay tuned. Um, the next feature I want to talk is the mixing. For me, it's the best feature of uh, GSS. The mixing are a kind of macro. So it's a macro that, that takes some parameter, and you have a body, um, a body that contains uh, CSS rules. So you can use the, the def mixing at rule to define your mixing. And when you want to use your mixing, you use the mixing at rule. And the compiler will, uh, will replace the call of your missing by the body after replacing the parameter. So this code will compile to put this. Uh, for this ex example, okay, we replace one line by two line, but when we have code like this, it's to define different border radius of an element. It's better to call mixing border radius that's adding the 12 uh, CSS line. Uh, at Arbis, we have several CSS groups, and they, ha they have had the idea to create an open source project named GSSS. GSSS is GSS on steroid, um, where they get all the mixing that you are using in your project. And let me show you. So this is the documentation of uh, GSSS. And so, for example, we have the border radius example that I just show you. But you can different, for example, for the, the gradient, because for my part, I don't know, I don't know how to, to specify a gradient in CSS. I, just, I have to go to Google to search for that. So we can use directly the, the mixing. So if you want to use mixing in your, in your application, Check first in this project, maybe the mixing is already uh, existing. Oops. Uh, um. Yeah, and if you want to see some CSS animation done with uh, GSSS, you can visit the, the, our website in Arbis. Let me show you. This is the Arbis website, and all the animation that we see, it's the grid application where we use GSS, and all the, grid, uh, all the animation is done uh, using uh, CSS and using GSS. GSS. So, for example, this is one of application I like. Or another one that's really nice. This kind of animation that we can do using just CSS3 and, you know,
Okay, next feature is conditional CSS. Um, yeah, we have two types of conditional CSS. We have what we call the compile time conditional and the runtime conditional. The compile time conditional is conditional that are evaluated at compile time. So that means that the compiler is able to evaluate the different condition and choose which block to add in, uh, in your CSS. Um, the other is uh, conditional that are evaluated at runtime. So that means that all the CSS uh, go to, uh, to your application at, at runtime, we will choose which block to add in your CSS. Uh, let's start with the conditional evaluated at compile time. Um, yeah, that's conditional based on permutation or properties that you define in your module file. Um, in order to be able to, to test on the permutation value or configuration property, you can use the is function. Uh, the is function takes normally two parameters. The first is the name of the permutation that you, you want to test. And the second one is the value. And if you specify only one parameter, uh, we assume that you want to test on the user agent. So if you read this code there, uh, if we are compiling for Internet Explorer 8 or co Internet Explorer 9, and the local is not English, you can use this, uh, this CSS code. Otherwise, if, if it's Safari, you can use this CSS code. Otherwise, if a custom property I define in my, uh, in my grid.xml file, if this value includes this, this CSS, otherwise use the other CSS. Uh, note that with GSS, you can use the Boolean operator in your conditional. It was not the case with the existing syntax. Um, yeah, a special case for, um, for compile time uh, conditional, if, if we have single Boolean value configuration property defined in uppercase, that is that. It's the configuration properties with multi-value set to false, and where the value is set to true or false. If you have this kind of property, you are not obliged to use the is function, and you can test directly with the, with the name of the configuration property. Um, yeah, for the conditional evaluator at runtime, um, we have to use the eval function, and you have to pass in as parameter uh, any valid Java expression that will return a Boolean. Uh, the difference between runtime and compile time conditional, um, this code is valid. That means that you can use uh, compile time conditional to define the different value of a uh, uh, constant but you cannot do that with runtime evaluation. This code is not valid and the compilation will fail because the compiler needs to know the value of the, the constant at compile time. This is the same here. We can use uh, a compile time conditional to specify the external directive. You will see the, this feature afterward, but you cannot do it with um, um, runtime con conditional. In fact, the rule is with runtime conditional can only contain CSS rule. Let's talk about resource URL. In your client bundle, you can have several type of resources like image, image resource or data resource. Uh, in this example, we have two image and uh, a font file. And sometimes you want to uh, refer to those resources in your CSS. So you need to know the, U, the URL of, uh, to access this resource at runtime. And to do that, you can use the resource URL function. And at this function, you can assign the value of the, the function to a, to a constant, or you can use directly the, the function in your CSS. Yeah, the alternate directive. <clears throat> if you try to, to compile this CSS with GSS, the compiler will fail. 
um, just because you define two times the same properties. Um, if you remember, I said that JSS will try to detect, uh, to validate your, your CSS. And in this case, it doesn't accept that you define two times the, the, the same rule in the same rule set. So now, if it's intentional, and in this case here, it is intentional because you are using the R RGBA function and it's not supported in all browser. So the first rule is the fallback rule if the browser doesn't support the RGBA uh, function. You have to, to tell to the, com to, to the compiler that it's intentional and that you want to keep both, rule, both rules in the final CSS. And for doing that, you just have to add the add alternate command in front of the second rule. Um, JSS uh, come with uh, built-in uh, right to left and left to right uh, flipping mechanism. So if you take this CSS, and um, when the application will be used in, with uh, a left to right uh, local, the compiler will flip automatically some property in your CSS. So that means that here, the, mar the margin right will become margin left, the border left will become border right, and the padding left and padding right will be switched. So this is the, the, the CSS used by your application if you are using left to right, uh, and it's done automatically by the compiler. That's nice. But sometimes you don't want this behavior. So for example here, I don't want that the compiler change the margin right to margin left. And if you want to avoid that, you can disable this behavior by using the no flip uh, annotation in command. So in this case, the compiler will not flip the margin right, but will continue to flip the border left and the, the padding, the padding right and padding left. Or the sprite support. Um, if you want to define sprite, you, you can do it using the grid sprites uh, property and give between codes the name of the image resource to use. Um, the compiler will Sorry, we'll create the needed CSS to create the sprite. <coughs> External classes, allow, you know that the compiler uh, will rename and obfuscate the, the, the name of your style class at the end, but sometimes you don't want that, so you want to disable this mechanism for some classes because Maybe the class is used, is used by uh, another external JavaScript library, so you don't, you don't want to obfuscate the, the name of the, the style class. Um, you can do it uh, by using the external at rule, like is the case for a time being with the existing, um, the, the existing syntax. The only difference here is that you cannot use the dot in front of your class name, so if you, if you you write at external dot my legacy class, the compiler would fail. And if you want to use the star suffix, so in this case, uh, that means that all the classes starting with grid dash will not be obfuscated. You have to use code to surround the, the star suffix. Okay, so we are done with the, the list of features. So let's talk about how to migrate an existing uh, grid application to GSS. Um, what you have to do to convert all your uh, existing CSS file to GSS, uh, sorry, what, what you have to do is to convert all your CSS file to GSS and to help you in this task, uh, we have created a, a converter. It's a Java class named CSS to GSS. Now, this is the help of the converter. And uh, if you don't pass any option, um, the converter will, will uh, expect, the converter expect to convert only one file and will output the result of the conversion to the standard output. Now, if you want uh, to convert all your CSS file in your application, I recommend you to use the minus R option and then you give a directory, and um, the compiler, the, the converter will uh, recursively uh, convert all your CSS 
on the given directory and it will leave the, the .css file in place, but it will create a new GSS file with the result of the conversion. So, this is for converting only one file, and this is for converting uh, a directory. Um, if you have only, for example, only one CSS with one CSS file to convert, I've created also uh, a web application. <clears throat> when you can pass to your CSS, you click on a button and you, you, you will receive the result, the, the GSS, um, the, the conversion to GSS. Okay, support of the legacy. Um, When you enable uh, GSS, we can, you can uh, continue to use the old syntax. Imagine, for example, that you are using an external library that contains some CSS resource that are not using GSS syntax. You are not able to, com to, to, to convert it, this file in GSS. So we, in this case, you can enable an automatic conversion to GSS during the compilation. That means that the, when the compiler will find a CSS file, it will first convert the CSS file to GSS in memory and then compile the GSS. And for, for doing that, you have to um, set the configuration property CSS resource dot conversion mode to strict. And yeah, each time the each time the, 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 the compiler will file a CSS file, it will automatically try to convert to GSS. Uh, there are two conversion modes, um, simply because GSS is uh, stricter than the, the existing uh, syntax of the existing compiler. Um, that means that when the converter will try to convert automatically your CSS file, it will maybe detect some errors. In this case, if you are in the strict mode, it will just stop the compilation and say, okay, your, your, your existing CSS is not valid and I'm not able to, I'm, I'm not able to go convert it to GSS. But this is the same problem. If you are using an external library and you cannot fix the CSS, you can enable the Lenyon mode. When you enable this mode, the converter, instead of make the fail the compilation, it will try to fix your CSS automatically. But let me show, let me tell you an, an example with the the old syntax. Um, if you are using uh, run, runtime conditional to define the variable with the old syntax, that will work. That means the compiler will say nothing and continue. But the, the, resu the, the result is not the one that you expect. That means uh, simply the, the, the existing compiler will just skip the, the runtime evaluation and uh, it will consider that the, the, the definition of the constant is outside of the, of, the, of the conditional. With GSS, it's not the case. With GSS, it will fail. But if you enable the Lennon mode uh, when the, during the conversion, the, the converter will extract the definition of the constant and put, and put the, the definition of the constant outside of the, the conditional. So you have to avoid to use the Lenyon mode and you have to try to use the strict mode only and to fix all the errors that are detected by the, the, the converter. Uh, the migration paths. The first thing that you have to do is to enable GSS and enable the auto conversion is strict mode. You compile your application, you fix all the issues found by the converter and by the, the GSS compiler. Then when this is done, you use the converter and convert all your CSS file to GSS and then you set back auto conversion to off. This is the recommended migration path. Um, yeah, some, co some configuration properties that, you, that are useful to know. 
The first one that I want to talk is the CSSResource.obfuscation prefix. Um, let me show you if it's defined. This is to specify a prefix that will be put in front of your style class after the, the, the obfuscation. Uh, if you let, that is the default configuration in the, and if you let this default configuration, each class name will be prefixed by a string of seven character, I think. Uh, it's very really useful if you have uh, several grid module grid application working on the same page because that avoids to have conflict between, uh, between your, your different grid application. But if you have only one grid application in the page, I recommend you to disable the obfuscation prefix because your, your class name will be shorter. And to do that, you just have to set the value to empty and so the compiler will not add a prefix in front of your class name and your class name will be three character instead of, of 10. Um, the allow at rules, allow, um, <coughs> GSS uh, allow you to use only standard at rule. Um, if you use another non-standard at rule, it will fail. But if you want to continue to do that, you can specify with this configuration property the, the at rule that GSS can uh, understand. So for example, here, we want to use the minus most document at rule. You have to specify it in your, in your configuration file. Otherwise, if you use this at rule directly without these configuration properties, the compilation will fail. It's the same for the allow function. So uh, GSS authorized only to use the standard CSS uh, function if you want to uh, use a non-standard function. So for example, imagine that in the future you have a sine or cosine function and you want to use it. Um, you can add the name of the function that are allowed to be used in your um, GSS file. Um, the roadmap. So as I said, the GSS was, the GSS support has been added in grid 2.7. It was fragged as experimental and disabled by default. In grid 2.8, uh, GSS support will be enabled by default, but will, and the old syntax will be deprecated. Um, in grid 3.0, we will remove the support for the old syntax, and we'll also remove the, uh, the auto converter. So don't wait, it's time to migrate to GSS and Google did it, so most of the Google Grid application have migrated to GSS with success. So that proves that GSS is stable, so you can migrate right now. So I finished, thank you for your attention. And if we have questions, I think we have time. Thank you.